State onto the road and trying for a season sweep of USC. The Trojans wearing the home whites, the black jerseys for their road team, Oregon State. Our officials, Tony Padilla, Sean Lehigh, Ryan McDaniel, as the game is underway from the Galen Center in Los Angeles. You look at the starting five. For Wayne Tinkle, he has tinkered with his starting lineup recently. While the same group for Andy Enfield consistently for the Trojans is Isaiah White driving the lane. On the offensive glass, the putback, Evan Mobley can't get it to go. And it's loose, and Zach Reichel comes out of the pack for Oregon State. For the home team, USC, that's what they're going to want to do. They're going to want to be aggressive and attack the basket. You already saw three shot attempts from them. Oregon State looking for their first four-game conference winning streak since 2002-2003. Nearly 20 years since Oregon State has won four conference games in a row. That's before cell phones, isn't it? 20 years is before <laughs> cell phones, I think, Rox. <laughs> Ethan Thompson, we got a wedgie 55 seconds into the game. <laughs> is that what those things are called? <laughs> you never knew that? It was a wedgie? Uh, I'll try not to make it. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway. So here's their winning streak, and they won at the buzzer against Arizona State that started this surge with Warith Alatiche with a slam. There with inside the final five seconds to give Oregon State the win, then beating USC, then going on the road down to Matthew Knight Arena, which is about 45 minutes away from Corvallis. It's Alatiche the miss. And they knocked off Oregon. It was their first road victory, first true road victory over a top 25 team since January of 1985 when they won at number 15, Washington as Isaiah Mobley with the game's first points for USC. Where were you in 1985? Where were uh, you in 1985? Middle school? <laughs> I was in my senior year at Maryland, and this is a nice drop step. I like what I see from the Mobley brothers. They're being aggressive, and for Oregon State, they've got to withstand that early punch because this is a revenge game for USC. That was on Warith Alatiche, and the end one for Isaiah Mobley. All right, that 1985, that Washington team, you know who yeah. was on that Detlef ranked Shrimp. Washington team? Of course yes. I know that one. Yes. Detlef, and, and I think Christian Velt was on there. He was. As a freshman. Yeah, I remember good those call, guys big time. That was my year, brother. I was the man. I was good, Roxy. <laughs> Jared Lucas and the offensive rebound. Worth Tiche in the follow. Good start by Oregon State. You, you mentioned how they won three games. They have a style because the assist to turnover ratio, they don't they don't turn the ball over. And then when you have the leadership and veteran experience of Ethan Thompson, they always give you a chance to win. They give it away only ten times per game. Yes. And Isaiah Mobley the miss, but Oregon State losing the rebound out of bounds, and it stays at this end with the Trojans. Roxy, think about Virginia that won the championship a couple years ago. Wisconsin, that's always been relevant. And then, what, St. Mary's out on the West Coast uh, and Gonzaga. They don't beat themselves when they don't turn the ball over a lot. This tempo favors Oregon State because you're not out running, so you have to play a half-court game. Evan Mobley from the baseline. Isaiah Mobley, the offensive rebound, pulls it out. Isaiah White spinning into the key, and he faked it in. High degree of difficulty, and that was hard off the glass, and it went in. <laughs> so you're saying he wouldn't get much style points on that one. That was a hustle basket. He, yeah, but it goes down to the 10 of the books for him. You got the two points. <laughs> he's a hustle guy. He knows his role. This is a good matchup here. Both teams are going to want to keep penetration out the middle. Shot clock rolling Ball down on the Beavers. Zach Reichel sets the feet. Has his shot blocked as USC, one of the best shot blocking teams in America. And they force a shot clock violation as the Trojans, one of the best defensive teams in America. Here's your play right here, Roxy. Hustle basket. You know what they say in boxing, just when we'll look good on the next one. And so he got it in there, hustling. But anything he gives you on the offensive end is a bonus because he's there to defend, to get uh, any loose balls, and then not to throw the runoff offensively. Right there, giving passes. Good angle. 
Drew Peterson in the corner. And the rebound, there is the hustle from Isaiah White. Yes. Peterson on yes. the reload. Had a good look. Out of bounds, we're going the other way. Oregon State ball. All right, when Oregon State, the last time they won four in a row in league play, is Wayne Tinkle now in his seventh year at Oregon State. But for Wayne, he's trying to get to that in terms of winning four in a row for the first time since 2002-2003. But the last time, you know, they won on the road against a top 25 team was your era. Who played for Oregon State then? Oh, it's got to be my teammate, Ace uh, AC Green, wasn't it? He was there, right yeah. Charlie yeah, Sitton. Ch Charlie Sitton, yeah. And the legend was coaching. What's, what was the legend's name? Ralph you know Miller. Me? Thank you, thank Ethan you. Ethan Thompson to lay in. And he is a legendary figure in Oregon State history. Ethan Thompson starting his 108th career game. He started every game of his Oregon State career. Isaiah Mobley gets the roll. And a whistle as Tony Padilla, after Technical. the play, yeah. stops playing. Isaiah Mobley may have done something after the bucket. Yeah, he said something. Said something. So a lot still to be decided here as we're going into the back half of Pac-12 play. Colorado with their win last night, now 7-3 and three after they knocked off Washington State. So Jared Lucas, who was the top foul shooter in the Pac-12, 95% from the line, will shoot the technical free throws, and Oregon State will have the ball. Yeah, you know, one thing I like about Oregon State and this young man shooting it, he's a cross between these two players. Well, right here with Mobley, this is excellent. You're going up the extension, bang, you get the two points, turn back around, don't say anything. That's a cheap one because now you get a personal foul and Oregon State scores a basket without defending them. But Roxy, this young man with the basketball reminds me of two players, J.J. Reddick and Eddie House. I mean, he is lethal, confident, always looking for a shot. And since he's come off an injury, he's been their leading scorer. And just moving into the starting lineup now for the fourth consecutive game for Wayne Tinkle is a nice move on the block by De'Aaron Tucker for Oregon State, giving the Beavers their first lead. It's fair to say that Oregon State has withstood the emo emotional charge of USC. They're quietly in the lead because they're playing sound defense, and Coach Wayne Tinkle is known to mix up his defense in one possession. Man to man, then go zone after under 10 seconds. The kick on Ethan Thompson, so they'll put 20 back up on the shot clock. As these two squads meeting for the second time in three games. Off the inbound, Drew Peterson clangs the three. Taj Eady, the offensive rebound and put back. The grad transfer from Santa Clara. Now for Evan Mobley, he won't, it won't be in the stats book, but that was a huge saving possession for him where they got the tap back and his teammate, Eady, got an easy basket. Good job by Evan. Isaiah White attacks. And it's a, out of bounds to the Beavers. Are they getting a foul against... USC and they may have gotten Chavez Goodwin the grad transfer from Wofford they did now watch this left coming in there jumping over that's a good clean play oh man what would what it would feel like Roxy what would it feel like to you to be seven feet and can jump out the gym no idea <laughs> no clue you're closer well, than I am <laughs> one I'm gonna tell you to be 18 and 19 and you, can, you can still free. probably jump higher than I can <laughs> Hey, brother, I drink a V8 and drive a V8 nowadays. Low impact rocks. <laughs> Let's see by one. Open three. Swish oh for Jared Lucas. He has got a pure stroke, and he's 41% outside the arc on the year. J.J. Riddick, Eddie House, where he has a scores mentality. He's confident. He never met a shot he didn't like. And once you turn the faucet on with him, he doesn't turn it off. Ethan Anderson air balls with three, but Chavez Goodwin picks it up. And Goodwin underneath will draw the foul. We'll get to the line for USC. Watch this right here. Now, you, this is just being gifted and talented. Stepping in to the shot, the extra pass, the assist to turnover ratio is there. And then he's like magic. Bang. And this is a homecoming for these guys a lot of these players four of them are from uh, california los angeles so they're going to want to put their best foot forward as well just a 47 percent foul shooter is chavez goodwin is gianni hunt 
who's one of those Southern California products for Oregon State, checks in. He's from Lakewood. Jared Lucas from Hacienda Heights. Ethan Thompson went to high school yep. in L.A. at Bishop Montgomery. A lot of Southern California ties with this Oregon State team is Goodwin misses both. And it's the Beavers by two. This would be the challenge for the Trojans all year long because if they're not able to capitalize at the free throw line as much as they get there, they are just shooting themselves in the foot. Good ball movement. Travel on Ethan Thompson. Big women's college basketball game tonight as number four, South Carolina, heads to Starkville to take on number 21, Mississippi State. Women's college basketball tonight, 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. As both teams in the top 25, Don Staley taking the Gamecocks on the road as they're atop the SEC. Running sweeping hook from Chavez Goodwin in the rebound, Ethan Thompson pushing it for the Bees. Johnny Hunts goes right through the key. Lucas pops a three. <laughs> wow. He makes me laugh, and I want to say something different. So I'll say the same thing differently. He's quick on the draw. You've got to get to him and try to run him off that three-point line. One or two dribbles and elevate on that post move. Ethan Anderson had a clean look. Chavez Goodwin, the offensive rebound, and a reset for the Trojans. Roxy, there's the story of the game so far. USC has not been able to make three-pointers or free throws. That's been a challenge for him. It's been an adventure. Yeah, but when you got seven feet like Evan Mobley, he can ram it home and get to the line for an and one. He's a quick leaper. He's got good instincts. He has a high ceiling. And so everything that they talk about is being a projected number one or two or or three in the draft, that's not overrated for him. Good hands right here, going up quick. Nice job. Well, it's gonna be a high ceiling for that young man and his brother. They, they both have, they're, they're both NBA players. One is more ready, obviously, the younger brother. Missed the free throw, a 71 percenter, and Ethan Thompson the rebound for the Beavers. Let's keep an eye on that throughout the game, Roxy. Right now it's 0 for 3 at the three-point line. This would be this game would be tied up. Got speed and quickness. Gianni has been their leading assist man for the last five games. Ethan Thompson missing, and here come the Trojans. This is what they want to do. They want to play fast. The counter from Oregon State. Hitting the trailer, and a three missed by Maurice Kalou. It goes to USC. From the corner, wide open the three from Noah Bauman. The transfer from San Jose State ties the game. Anything that USC gets from the three-point line and the free throw line makes them one of the, one of the most dangerous teams in the nation. That's a good shot with his feet set. And that's what Bauman was brought in by Andy Enfield to do. Stretch the floor, knock down threes. He's been inconsistent so far this season as Ethan Anderson whistled for the foul. Tied at 14 in L.A. Oregon State, USC. Two of the hottest teams going in the Pac-12. Coming up. Still growing into his body, maybe improve as a, a defensive rebounder, but he shows you flashes. He's not this player, but he shows you flashes at times of a young Anthony Davis. Wow, that's high praise. Well, while we're talking about this one, I once heard a scout say uh, e uh, Ethan Thompson reminds them uh, a lot of the young man that, that, that's playing that was at Virginia. What's his name? That was, um, oh, my goodness, six five point guard at Indiana now. Virginia, Roxy, help me out on uh, He's at Indiana Pacers right now. Brogdon. 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 Yeah, Brogdon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is he a Malcolm Brogdon kind of player? I think that it would be tough for him to achieve just based on the type of Malcolm was, the type of player Malcolm was in his college career. But, you know, he can handle the ball. He can shoot it. I think he's still working to get a little bit more efficient in his game. Um, but he's okay. improved as a passer. You know, you, you never know. I think he's the type of guy who could potentially sneak in, you know, through the G League just because of his scoring ability. Mike Schmitz with us. Let's focus on 
Evan Mobley. And right now you have him at number two. What would he need to do, Mike, in your eyes, to elevate himself to that number one pick and maybe beat out Kate Cunningham? Yeah, I think if he's able to lift this team, you know, to, to a deep run here, you know, deep into March, uh, and, and kind of just continue to elevate them, be consistent, you know, with his energy levels, I think the one reservation people have about him is, is he ever going to be like a number one type of guy? You know, can you throw the ball to him and say, hey, go generate offense for us, and there misses the, the right hand jump hook but I think that's the only question for Evan because he does pretty much everything else whereas Cade you know he can be your number one guy and somebody who can create from the perimeter and you can run the majority of your offense too. Hey Mike you watch a lot of these games what are you looking at take us through the mindset of a scout are you looking for a lot of things of what they don't do or more things celebrating what they uh, are able to do? Yeah, so when I come to a game live, right, we obviously have the ability to watch film now, but when I come to a game live, I'm going to the warm-up, I'm, I'm watching them shoot, you know, 50 to 100 times, I'm looking at how they interact with their teammates, I want to see their body, I want to see their body language, their coachability in timeouts, um, their athletic traits, all those things. There are certainly things that, that you can pick up more in person than you can on film, so really just want to get a feel for, like, who is this person and what makes them tick throughout the course of a basketball game? You know, that's, wow, good finish right Hello. there for the big man. That is I, I, Evan Mobley. I will say this. <laughs> that's a good point because when I was at the University of Maryland, Jerry West said, Adrian, I didn't like your body language mm. in and out of timeouts. I didn't like how you interacted with your teammates. And to be honest with you guys, Quite frankly, it was true, and it cost me a trip down in the CBA, which is now the, what is that, NBGA, what's the, the G League. The G League, yeah. Yep. Yep. The G League. So, body language, it, body language is very important. Yeah, no question, and I think it just raises a flag for scouts. It, it doesn't mean it's the end-all, be-all, right? You know, we see... Luka Doncic Look right now doesn't have the best, right the best body language, but he really does remind me a little bit of, of Anthony Davis just in the way that he can control the game without really needing a ton of touches offensively. You see the measurables there. You know, both guys around seven feet tall, seven four, seven five wingspan. And remember, Anthony Davis was not this offensive stud at Kentucky. You know, he was more the glue that held it all together defensively, and you see a little bit of that with Evan Moby as well. What areas of his game, Mike, do you think he can improve that the NBA scouts would love to see Evan Mobley get better at? I think as a defensive rebounder, uh, that's the main thing for him. You know, he, he's not the most physical guy on the defensive glass. You know, he, he's a little bit sleepy at times there. And then also just adding more ways to generate offense for himself, whether it's a mid-post touch. Like, do, do you have, you know, a face-up jumper? Do you have a rip-through and spin? Do you have counters off of that uh, and then turning himself into a real knockdown three-point shooter you know he, he's 35 percent from three right now but is he going to be someone who you can rely on night in and night out to really shoot it from three at an nba caliber level where's his brother as you're talking about the family here on the projection scale yeah so i think his brother you know still has room to improve just to show that he can be a knockdown shooter from three. You know, when you have a guy who's not exactly a run and jump athlete, he's got to be productive and be efficient, and that's where he's still improving. But there is a little bit of Kyle Anderson there. Oregon State by one, despite USC shooting under 30%. USC already, Adrian, they have 12 offensive rebounds in just yes. over 12 minutes of play. And that's what they should be doing, pounding the glass. They're very good at rebounding first in the conference. And they've got to make shots right there. 13 offensive rebounds. And a travel on Chavez Goodwin. It's distinctive. Andy's upset. He thought that should have been a foul. I thought that was a good call. Andy is eight here at USC. What's that? It's easy for us. We can sit here and say, yeah. ah, Coach, uh, that, was, that was a good call. <laughs> I wouldn't tell him that. Look at the patience of Oregon State. They're undeterred. This is a very good USC defensive team, but they're taking their time looking for high percentage shots. USC is a club, and you mentioned it defensively, holding the opposition is Evan Mobley coming back to below 38% shooting. And they're a plus eight in the rebound margin per game this season. And when you look at their length, 
Adrian, all the bodies, it's not just Evan and Isaiah Mobley, but the length of Chavez Goodwin, Max Agboncolo. Sure. They have some real size across the front line and even into the backcourt. Well, the tallest team in the nation, where they average six foot six. So this is a long team, but there's a couple areas that's been a challenge. The free throw line, consistently making shots. But they don't, right there, you got to knock that shot down. Oh, Second rough, three rough for there. Noah Bauman. And that's a really good sign for the Trojans. And sixth in the country in blocks at nearly six per game. Look at that, Rocks. hit two threes. Six foot six. Rocks, you would feel good at six two, aren't you? Six one and a half, six two? <laughs> Keep going down the ladder. <laughs> oh, sorry, big guy. You're, Isaiah Mobley, a physical me, rebound. <laughs> Now, I'm not going down. I'm not going to let myself get posted up. I'm staying out in the perimeter. <laughs> nice Bowman, shot. Stop it. The pull up. You can see he's feeling it, Adrian. When he's putting it on the deck and going into the key and not just settling for the three, he's feeling pretty good about his game. The shot blockers couldn't leave the, the Mobley brothers, so they had to stay at home. That was a good decision to get in the lane two feet and just shoot that five-footer. Bauman is three of three from the floor. The rest of USC is seven of 27. Reese Kalu launching from the corner and the rebound. There's Mobley, Isaiah Mobley for USC. You just heard Mike say that he reminds you a lot of Kyle Anderson. I think he's like a Kyle Anderson, Boris Diaw, just long and, and gangly, but he's effective. It's gonna be good. Evan Mobley can't handle the pass. USC, their fourth turnover. Four point that lead for poor, the Trojans. That was a poor passing out uh, angle. You've got to be able for Bauman to take a hard dribble to the baseline and make it easy for him. Just throw that little bounce pass. So Bauman's been the instant offense for USC. The same with Jared Lucas for Oregon State. Each has eight points to lead their respective clubs. Yeah, and, and this young man hadn't gotten going yet either. Gianni is really quick with the basketball. He and Reichel play well off of each other. Ethan Thompson's been quiet. Here he is. And that goes over the top, out of bounds, USC ball. As Ethan Thompson, 11th in Oregon State history in scoring. Sixth in Beavers history in assist and with Gary Payton They're the only players in Oregon State history to have at least 1400 per points and 400 career assists Yeah, he's gotten it done played the first two years with his older brother Stephen Thompson his dad is on the bench Stevie Thompson. So man, I'm so happy for this young man. What an example as a college student athlete Graduated in three years from Oregon State and the block shot from Isaiah Mobley and it stays with Oregon State on the baseline as the Beavers have gone scoreless for almost four minutes right now Roxy when you're a little guy you can't go in there in deep penetration that's what the trees want you've got to stay out there one or two quick dribbles pull up for the shot got to remember a guy like tiny Archibald remember that one Roxy. oh yeah Nate yeah. the skate Archibald led the league and NBA in points and assists in the same season the Aaron Tucker is fouled off the inbound. We'll head to the line for the Beavers. It's Oregon State, a good foul shooting team, 76% as a squad. And Tucker is 72 percent or will shoot two as De'Aaron Tucker starting now for the fifth consecutive game for Wayne Tinkle, the sophomore from Dallas. How about the job Coach Tinkle has done? Wayne Tinkle, and he's playing his first season without his son Trace, uh, that's been there and was... Uh, so successful made the adjustments Trace now in the G League who's originally with the Lakers and then the Lakers will not be fielding a G League team this season So he ended up signing an exhibit 10 contract with Toronto. So he is down in the bubble Getting ready to play the G League season for Toronto yeah, I'm, I'm so happy for these guys getting the opportunity to extend their career Spins out for Drew Peterson, who is off to a rough start. He's 0-4 from the floor. 
Drew has not shot a bad shot yet. He just hadn't made it. Zach Reichel trying to back in. See how Peterson committed to the try to run him off the three-point line? Good defense. Excellent job by Peterson on that possession. Ethan Anderson on the drive and dish. But an offensive foul to charge on Anderson as Zach Reichel stood in there. And the senior draws the offensive foul, the second on Anderson. Tight one. He's 23. Although both teams have hit a little bit of a drought, the Beavers are just one of their last eight from the field. They haven't scored in about four and a half minutes, yet it's only a two-point game because USC is shooting 31% from the floor. Yeah, and also the three-point line is a great equalizer. This young man right here with the basketball is a threat offensively. And then their leading scorer, Ethan Thompson. Nice ball movement. Shot clock winding down, and a block is called as Zach Reichel on the baseline draws the foul on Taj Eady of USC. Fifth Trojans team foul. Roxy, that was a good possession both ways. Moving the basketball side to side. Oregon State does not turn the ball over a lot. And then USC committed to try to chase him off the three-point line. Off the inbound, Jared Lucas ties the game. Ten for Lucas. He shoots it as easy as Evan Mobley dunks it. I mean, that's just natural. Taj Eady the leaner. And an offensive rebound in Evan Mobley. Rock, did you just hear what I said? He shoots it as easy as Mobley dunks it. That's just natural. That's their gifting. Close to the basket, Mobley is something special. Ethan Thompson answers for Oregon State. And a timeout taken. Tied at 25. Two and a half minutes to go. Ion and the Pelicans, 7.30. Then it's Luka and the Mavs squaring off against the first place Jazz. Donovan Mitchell's club has won 10 straights. NBA Friday coverage starts with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. Utah's been red hot. Open look as Noah Bauman can't get it to go. Open is Zach Reichel. Good shots. Both teams are getting good shots. Reichel, that was an excellent shot. But for Bauman, that was a, a good shot for him as well. On the run out, Zach Reichel off balance, and Oregon State reclaims the lead. First points for the at, senior from Wilsonville, Oregon. You look at it again, in this game, the Temple has actually favorite Oregon State because the fast break points have been few to come by for USC. Noah Bauman missing a three. After he made his first three shots, he's now missed his last three. Out of bounds will stay at this end of the floor. Surprisingly, believe it or not, Roxy, the Beavers have more fast break points, six to five. So the tempo, if it's a half court, they're comfortable in it because they're an excellent free throw shooting team and also because they don't turn the ball over. Kick out from Evan Mobley. Open three to a Peterson. Can't get it. And diving for the loose ball, Oregon State. And here comes Ethan Thompson bumped in the backcourt. Trapped. Gets rid of it. Now Oregon State looks to attack. Oregon State playing with such an ease and a flow to him. They're not rattled. They've taken the best punch so far in the first half by the Trojans. And they're trying to build on the two-point lead. Turnover by the Beavers. SC pushing. Pull up three. Tosh Eady in transition. A career 1,000-point score. Fifth-year senior now. What he gives them is a lot of experience from the outside. USC seesaws in front. Just the third three is the Trojans three of 14 from downtown. Jared Lucas looking for a shot. Tough three. And there is Peterson in the defensive glass. And SC will slow it up and play for the final shot of the half up one. Now you've got scoring in five position. 
Akbak Polo can hit that three-point shot, but also look for Bauman when his feet are set, and Edie just hit a big shot from the outside. Peterson to drop off and the slam for Evan Mobley. That'll take us to halftime as the emphatic two points to close out the first half. Three-point lead for the Trojans. Evan Mobley with a strong finish and USC leading at the Browns. In the first half, Evan Mobley, eight points, eight rebounds to pace the Trojans, who have won seven of their last eight ball games coming into this one. Well, you know, Rocky, it was a determined effort, especially rebounding is all about want to. They have the want to. This has been a revenge game for them because they felt like they let one go when they lost 58 to 56 on the road to Oregon State. USC shot only 33% from the floor in the first half. Three for 14 from three-point land. Down the lane, Isaiah Mobley missing the leaner. Offensive rebound number 16 for the Trojans and a three, Isaiah White. Eventually, second shot opportunities break your back. Right there where they had the offensive rebound and the best time to shoot a three-pointer is when the defense has collapsed in. That was perfect execution. Largest lead for USC. Warif Alatiche, the turnaround. Wow, that's a name we have not called in the first half. He, he's an explosive player. Plays bigger than his 6'7", 6'8", frame. Picked up two early fouls. Is Taj Edey the finish? I think Oregon State has a definition. They know who they are. They know they're not an explosive team, not a flashy team. They'll grind it out, and they play true to who they are. USC has such a high ceiling because of the Mobley brothers that if they can get consistent shooting offensively, they could beat anyone in the nation. Nice pass from Ethan Thompson, but the block shot coming over was Evan Mobley. But first, a foul on USC. And you, interesting point you brought up, baby. When you look at the talent in the Pac-12, it, it's so evenly balanced at the top with UCLA, SC, Colorado, Oregon, Stanford, Arizona. But when you look at the talent, who has the, the best A game in them among the Pac-12 teams? On one night, if all the stars are aligned, who has the highest ceiling? Well, right now, you can go with the team that's been holding serve. So UCLA, and they're doing this without, I think, their best pro prospect and Chris Smith, who's out with an ACL for the rest of the year. So you won't sound crazy if you want to say hold serve with UCLA. You won't sound crazy if you say USC. I think it's a great discussion to have, and it's great for the Pac-12. That's a great question, Rock. But you can pick from those top teams. Colorado, huge basket right there for Isaiah Mobley. But Colorado as well uh, is now a non-sleeper team. Stanford, if they get all their pieces back, that's just how good this league is. Going to a jump hook. Can't sh shot block right there. Foul and one, Warith Alatiche for Oregon State. The transfer from Nichols State. Rox Roxy, I would really be upset with Peterson. You're not going to block that shot. That's a good call. That's a cheap foul. We are not seeing his best basketball. He's 0 for 3, 0 for 5 at the three-point line. And then you gave away a cheap possession right there. Second on Drew Peterson. And the free throw short from Warith Alatiche, who is second in the Pac-12 in rebounding. And the number one offensive rebounding player in the conference, averaging three and a half offensive rebounds a game. But USC has 16 offensive rebounds in this game. Yeah, the missed shot has been their best friend. They have attacked the glass. That's Evan nice. Mobley and Isaiah White is challenged. Isaiah Mobley can't get it, and there is Warith Alatiche, and Oregon State looks to counter. Ethan Thompson moving in. Taj Edey back the other way. Isaiah Mobley glides in, counting, and one for Isaiah Mobley, the older, smaller brother. <laughs> now he hits the hard shots and missed the easy shots, but comes in, good concentration, 
Head on the rim. Nice job. Focus. That's a good job by Isaiah. And then he stuck the landing, Roxy. Oh, oh, like Isaiah, at, at 6'10", 235 is the shorter, older brother. With Evan being 7 feet, but Isaiah has 20 pounds on his younger brother. Yeah, and that's a good problem to have. One seven feet still growing, <laughs> and then six foot ten. They're both skilled, wonderful young guys. Their dad is on the bench with them. I love hearing the family story and the family dynamics. And I, I talked to Evan last week and how much it's helped him as Jared Lucas rattles out a three. There's Warith Alatije flying through the lane. Ethan Thompson gliding in. And speaking of the family connection, his dad, Stevie Thompson, an assistant to Wayne Tinkle. But you alluded to the Mobley family with both brothers playing and dad Eric on the bench. And I asked Evan about just having his brother and his dad around all the time during with what's been going on. He said it's been an enormous help for him making the transition to college basketball as Ethan Anderson sticks a three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm glad to see Anderson hit that one. They're roommates. The Mobley brothers are roommates. Uh, you, you see the family dynamic. There's been success at Oregon State with the Thompson family as well, the Tinkle family. So these are these are good people, good student athletes, great stories. It's Ethan with the rebound coming in here. Nice job. Graduated in three years. Plays within his game. I think he's going to be on somebody's NBA roster next year. Six five. Combination guard. Pretty move. Eight for Ethan Thompson. You know, he reminds me of the statement that the great Henry Aaron, we know he just passed the celebrated life. Henry Aaron said in his prime, if you came to see him, he played the same way every day. 21 years, 21 year All Star. And this reminds me. Foul, the third on Al shot maker when he has it going and has some potential defensively uh, Josh Christopher you know he's a bucket out of Arizona State needs to get a little more efficient but teams like the body they like the explosiveness uh, Marcus Bagley you know 6'8 shooting 38% from three that's a recipe for success and then Chris Duarte out of Oregon the Wiley vet who's got size and shooting ability so there's definitely some interesting names for this year and some more to get into for the future as well for any of those guys projected lottery picks um, you know, Zaire Williams, I think, has a chance to go in the lottery, potentially even the top 10. Uh, he hasn't had the most consistent year, but, you know, you could see a guy like Karis LeVert having the success he is in, in the NBA and him potentially playing a similar role. I think Josh Christopher is maybe in that mix for some. Uh, we have him just on the outside looking in, and then the rest of these guys, um, not quite to that level yet. But, yeah, Zaire, I mean, he's incredibly fluid. He's got a great feel for the game, and he has shot-making potential. Just hasn't had the most efficient year yet. So, um, you know, he's still kind of growing into his body, more of a long-term prospect. Mike, who is his cop? I, when I see him, Zaire Williams, he reminds me of Demar Johnson from years ago. Mm. Six foot ten, and mm -hmm. he's long, and and got a lot of potential. I would love to see him unpack the bags for another year, but I'm, I'm sure that won't happen. Who is his comp in you guys' eyes? Yeah, I see him a little bit like a Karis LeVert, to be honest. You know, he, he's a little bit taller, um, but sure. just in that kind of lean, lanky, you know, playmaker who can create offense for himself and his teammates, has the potential to be a good defender as well. That's an area, you know, he's still improved. But it's going to be interesting to see what some of these young guys do as well, because to your point about staying in school scouts aren't really on the road as much this year just because of the pandemic so i think you might see some guys opt to go back to school not zaire in particular but some other freshmen who are maybe kind of on the fringe there sure mike i want to ask you about mckinley wright mm. here is a four-year star player in colorado and we just saw peyton pritchard as a four-year star for oregon go late in the first round to boston what do you see with mckinley wright for the nba I love his toughness. Uh, he's a competitor. Uh, you know, he picks up 94 feet. He defends. Uh, he can move the ball. You know, he took a little bit of a step back as a shooter this year. He's shooting under 30% from three. But he makes everyone around him better. And if you go watch him in pregame, I mean, his energy, his tenacity is already NBA level. So I don't, I'm not sure he's going to hear his name called. But it wouldn't shock me one bit if he makes it, you know, through training camp. Kind of like we saw from a Jordan McLaughlin who played here at USC.
I see him. He's playing great minutes as a backup point guard for the Minnesota Timberwolves. So I kind of see him in that one. Let me ask you this. We, we talked about that a little earlier with body language. Mm. How important is it with the, the red flags and the intangibles? Will these guys show up? Will they play through the celebrity? Will they not be distracted with the NBA lifestyle? How important is that when you're scouting a high-level draft pick, or any draft pick, actually? Yeah, it's incredibly important. You know, teams want guys who are competitive, who are smart, who play the right way, who make everyone around them better. And, you know, it is kind of a sliding scale to some degree. If you're just an insane talent who has some question marks, teams are probably a little bit more likely to take a swing on you. But if you're not the most talented guy, you've got to be productive, and you've got to be a great teammate. And so that's something that I would preach, you know, to every young player out there. I mean, play tough, be competitive, play the right way, and be a great teammate. And because scouts, they're watching. They're following your social media accounts. They're talking to your coaches. They know what you're up to. So it's really important to kind of check all those boxes. Well, we look at that also Sam, with Porter. Yeah. Remember Porter that played mm. at USC, and he's making it a against the real life. So. Right, yeah, yeah, an incredible talent. An incredible talent. And, and you know, you, you, you hope he kind of turns the corner and, and gets everything together because, you know, he's one of the more gifted players I, I've seen in the West Coast. And then the pass there to Mobley. Yeah, Mobley is, I mean, we've seen a handful of dunks here from him today, and it's almost effortless, you know, just the ability to impact the game really all over the floor. Um, just his size against this Oregon State team has, has really showed up on both ends. We're accustomed, you think Mike, to see on your list of prospects in the Pac-12 especially. Say that Litter again. We're, we're used to seeing, Mike, on your list of top prospects in the Pac-12 that littered with guys from Arizona and UCLA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing that on your list. What do you see with those two programs and who are maybe the best prospects the NBA are looking at? Yeah, well, when you're talking about UCLA, you know, Chris Smith, obviously, his injury, um, you know, that was a, a tough blow for him. You know, he was a guy I think would have heard his name called last year if he ended up staying in the draft. But even so, he, if he's able to get healthy, you know, he's a guy who could eventually get to the NBA level just because 6'9", can shoot it, can handle, improve defender. Um, and then I look at Jaime Jaquez uh, out of UCLA. He's not a this year guy. But I think down the road, you know, his toughness, he's shooting over 40% from three, uh, he's competitive. I look at like a Pat Connaughton type of guy who's carved out a role in the NBA. Um, and then at Arizona, they have some long-term guys as well. You know, Ben Matherin is someone who's really introduced himself to NBA scouts this year. Uh, Canada by way of Haiti, 6'6", long arms, explosive. Um, had a big game actually against Oregon State earlier this year, you know, 30 plus. Um, so I, I would like to see him, you know, go back and prove himself as a potential lottery pick. Uh, but he's got a ton of talent. And then Azulis Tabellis, the, the lefty Lithuanian, is having a nice year for them as well. So some long term prospects to keep an eye on. Over and back turnover. Oregon State gives it right back to USC. Mike, thanks again for joining us. We'll be reading and following everything thanks, you've Mike. got. NBA draft is always on the radar app the big 12 SEC challenge is coming this weekend presented by Continental Tire Six-point lead for USC Trojans have made five of their last seven but Oregon State hanging in there against the Trojans Isaiah White and a foul on Roman Silva and White will go to the line for USC. Roxy, White is really having himself a nice game. He's coming off the bench, and, well, he's he's been productive in the minutes that he's got. Two for five, three rebounds, one assist, and he's been all over the floor. 68% for the line for the grad transfer, Isaiah White, who came over from Utah Valley Began his college career at Salt Lake Community College. He's from Rancho Cucamonga. Out in the Inland Empire. It's both. And has fit in nicely with his USC team. After playing two years at Utah Valley, the Trojans have matched their largest lead. Now where's the scoring going to come from from Oregon State? Their leading score, Thompson's in double figures. Nice job. That's a good jump hook. And there is Isaiah White in the defensive glass. And Andy Enfield has had a lot of success with the grad transfers. You look at the guys on this roster as 
That's a travel oh, whistled oh. against Chavez Goodwin, another one of the grad transfers, along with Taj Edey. But Daniel Utomi last year, who was a key part for Andy Enfield in hitting some big shots and yeah. stepping into a big role. Well, both teams, both sides have hit the junior college and transfer market. That's the way of college basketball now. It used to be you get the high school athlete, you still try to get them and groom them up for four years. Here come the Trojans and Drew Peterson, who was a regular transfer, and the follow by Chavez Goodwin. Good job by Goodwin, by White. They run the floor. They get extra possessions for you. You don't need to run an offense for these guys. Timeout, Oregon State, 6-0 run for the Trojans. USC enjoying their largest lead of the afternoon. Ups at the buzzer. And so Stanford with the win. Here are the updated net rankings. In Colorado, the highest net ranking in the Pac-12. Tad Boyle's team at 16. There's USC. Arizona, who is ineligible for the postseason. They have taken themselves out of consideration with a postseason ban. Cut into the bucket. And Rodrigue Andela comes up empty. And the rebound, Chavez Goodwin for USC. You know, with that net ranking, all of those teams have enough to be in the field of 68. So this is a good league where they've said, the coach says they cannibalize each other. They just eat each other during the regular season. Drew Peterson the kick and the slam for Chavez Goodwin. Eight that straight was, for USC. Roxy, that was the best play that Peterson has made this game. On the timeout, I was watching Coach Jason Hart encouraging his point guard, saying, just settle down, trust your teammates, and that was a good possession for him. Oh, Rodrigo Andela trying to power his way up, sent back. Jared Lucas. Three. Two things that cover a multitude of sins, a multitude of mistakes as a basketball player. One, we just saw it. Good shooting and playing hard. When you have a team that plays hard, like you see with USC, they've doubled them up on the offensive glass, 18 to 7, and then making shots, you always have a chance. Third three for Jared Lucas. His bodies went crashing to the deck. There is Lucas. A little slow to get up along with Isaiah White. Watch this right here. Great pass in the middle, simplifying the game. And again, that was made on that timeout when Coach Jason Hart, was a point guard himself that was at Syracuse, was just encouraging him, saying this is the next play. It's the next play. Have a short memory. Great job by Peterson. Inside nine minutes. Foul the second on Lucas. Tajidi, one of the grad transfers for USC. Began his college career at Southeast Missouri State. And among the leaders in transfer scoring coming down the coast from Santa Clara to Southern California is there is Peterson after the nice assist bearing the three well a couple things happen when you get a veteran player one they're more mature so that's not their first time leaving from home they know it's not about themselves after they've transferred and then there's a hunger to try to get back the year that they transferred out so a lot of positives when you have the right attitude Oregon State a turnover that's 10 now committed by the Beavers Wayne Tinkle's team down 12, riding a three-game winning streak, looking for their first four-game winning streak in league play since 2002-2003. Bauman gave him a great half, a great spark off the bench. And Oregon State to take away. Ethan Thompson to trail three. Good timeout. Andy Enfield does not want to let Oregon State get momentum. 
Nine point game. You mind, Rock? Let me see your mind. He's bopping his head to the music there, you know? <laughs> oh, well, that was a real person. Oh, oh, that was a real person. <laughs> that was actually the fourth official, as there is a standby in case something happens to one of the officials assigned to the game. There's always a standby just in case. Oregon State forcing a turnover. Traditionally, they're usually at half court, but probably with social distancing. Spread them Johnny out. Hunt missing the three. Evan Mobley rebound number 11. Another double-double for Evan Mobley in this one. 10 points, 11 rebounds. He has seven now this season, and five of the last eight games he has posted a double-double. Yeah, easy double-doubles, too. Hand strained anything, just going to get it offensively with the rebounds. Doesn't just hunt his shots. He's a great teammate. Goes straight up. No shot blocking there. In the lane. They have impacted this game, Roxy, where you look at 18 offensive rebounds, 18 to 8, points in the paint, 22 to 7, and then also bench points. 30-16, so this has been a dominating performance, having USC shoot over 67, 65% from the field. Good second half for USC. It was tight, three-point game at the half. Oregon State led by as many as five in the first half. And Ethan Anderson gets the roll, and USC has their largest lead of the afternoon. Yeah, when Ethan Anderson hit those back-to-back -back three pointers that really expanded his game and relaxed his game If he could give you anything Offensively from outside of 15 feet that really helps his confidence He missed eight games was dealing with a back issue some back spasms and Now finally starting to get back into a rhythm. He played very well in their win at Cal last weekend at 11 points as Gianni Hunt missing a three and the rebound Noah Bauman for USC. But now that he's into a flow, he provides Adrian a different dimension for this USC team. Well, he's got toughness, explosiveness. I think he's an NBA potential. He's built like a running back, but I think that he could be a Brad Wanamaker, who's uh, had success in the NBA himself, really explosive. He's going to need an offseason to get back in, in shape. This pass right here in the lane. Then it only takes a seven-footer that can block that shot on the leaper. <laughs> so, that was a leaper on leaper. Here's where he ranks across college basketball in terms of freshman as a three. For Noah Bauman and USC has opened up a 16-point lead. 11 for Bauman off the bench. Roxy, if you were to say how were they able to finally open this up, it's because of the offensive rebounds and the points in the paint. When you give up that many second chance opportunities, that eventually fatigues your defense. Fourth foul on Ethan Anderson. A 16 point cushion for the Trojans. They were supposed to play Oregon on Saturday, but the Ducks are on pause because of COVID issues for a second time. And Oregon was supposed to play cross town at Pauley Pavilion this evening against UCLA, which has been postponed. And they were supposed to play earlier this season in Eugene, but that game was postponed because of an official that tested positive for COVID. And that's why we're seeing a fourth official now at Pac-12 games was because of that situation would happen in Matthew Knight Arena earlier this season. Sure, and I, I totally respect the protocols. I totally respect how the Pac-12 and really all of college basketball is going the extra mile. So uh, I'm, I'm really thankful and grateful for them respecting that margin of error. Ethan Thompson hitting a three. And a timeout for the Beavs with four. Santa Cruz. And then coming up tonight, here are a couple key games as Dan Schulman, Jay Billis will have Stanford and Arizona for you. Cal is at Arizona State, and shocking to me, Adrian, that Arizona State has only one Pac-12 win. 
Yeah, and they were a preseason top 25 team, so I know that's been shocking for them as well. When you have Remy Martin that's been on the wooden watch list and uh, had success, Bobby Hurley, we're going to go to three straight NCAA tournaments. So that, that is a, a bit of a head scratcher. And those two outstanding freshmen with Josh Christopher and Marcus Yeah, Patrick. Yeah, and, and I think they are pro talent. I think they are on the radar screens. <laughs> I think they're out of there too, <laughs> Roxy. Doesn't take much for any guys that, that have the inkling of being an NBA player hitting the door. Chavez Goodwin missing the front end of the one and one Corner three on the way. Tariq Silver had a good look. Offensive rebound for the Beats. Ethan Thompson lines it up. And the long rebound, there's Thompson. He's shut down by Max at Boncolo. And it's the first on the 6-9 sophomore from Laguna and Miguel. Team foul number six on USC. So the next one will put Oregon State into the bonus. 4-13 remaining, and the Beavers need to get a flurry here to trim this That's, USC lead. You just mentioned trying to get a flurry here, and for Andy Enfield, he knows that this game is not over. He still wants his young team to play with a sense of urgency. Isaiah Mobley has come back in the game. He defends well. Both of his brothers, both brothers play well off of each other. Jared Lucas, three. 18 for Lucas, and that's the fourth three for the sophomore, and it cuts the Trojans' lead to 10. Roxy, Jared By the way, Lucas. we got to wish a happy birthday. Wayne Tinkle turned 55 on Tuesday. Big Wayne. Congratulations. Big five five. Yeah, he's a big smooth rascal, too. You know, the now big he, smooth. Now, he thought he was going to have a nice family dinner at home and it's been snowing a bit in Corvallis this week and his wife Lisa was making dinner at the house and a nice steak and lobster dinner and the okay. two daughters Jocelyn and Ellie were going to come down from Portland and spend some quality time as a three is banked in by Julian Franklin time out finish that story with the steak well, and lobster what happened oh Cliff AB the power went out right in the oh. middle of when oh. Oh. Lisa was making dinner. So they had to go, instead of making it in the kitchen, had to go on to the grill and do it the old-fashioned <laughs> way to complete oh. the dinner. They, and the family, they were playing cards by candlelight because they oh, had no power. But literally right as dinner was finished, the power as came as soon on. as she, they done they were done making dinner the power came back on yeah oh man wrist walls 2.0 nice that was a nice story i like that one. <laughs> offensive rebound drew peterson another offensive rebound for usc and then a timeout is gianni hunt is down on the floor right now the sophomore from lakewood his all-star son for the first part of this year and so he's made that adjustment and they've been winning games they're relevant they're competitive so i'm really happy for all of these programs when they do it the right way zone look from oregon state which they've had success with over the years under wayne Tinkle. good ball movement great ball movement and a foul as mobley will go to the line for a one and one eighth beavers team foul so with 250 remaining Evan Mobley 0 of 1 from the line in this one 71 percent on the season after Julian Franklin Franklin whistled for number two this is where you have to finish the show close the show and a lot of times it'll happen for them at the free throw line get up there over the front rim backspin follow through one more for Mobley See, Rox, I'm not a jinxer like you at the free throw line. <laughs> Jariah Horn hadn't missed all season long. <laughs> hadn't missed all season long. You talk about a free throw, and he misses. I had so much confidence Telegraph. in him that I didn't think he could miss. <laughs> Rox, you're out of control. I love you, Rox. You're my guy. My goodness. Nine-point game. Three-point shot. 
close out, get to him quickly right there. They can hurt you for that three point line. Got to close out the shooting gap. Ethan Thompson, 18 for Ethan. Reflected out of bounds, will stay with USC. Not you treat most of these games like a road trip. Yeah, At some point, hopefully, we'll be making road trips again. <laughs> I had a road trip question for you. What word is spelled okay. the same from front and back? That was my question for you, Rocks. What, what word is spelled the same from the front and back? Wow, I can't think of something. <laughs> hmm. You know you got me. That was good. <laughs> you just said, wow. Mom, pops, radar. Rotor. I thought Johnny about Hunt. when I saw that. And the loose ball there is Drew Peterson for USC. Now, if USC can hit their free throws and not turn the ball over, they've got a chance of finishing this thing out. Jared Lucas knocks it away. USC ball. Seven point Trojans lead with a minute 46 to go. How about USC the has won 12 of the last 15 matchups between these two teams in L.A. But how about the effort of Oregon State? This was a revenge game. USC put their best foot forward. They were playing with a sense of urgency, and Oregon State is still competing after being dominated off of the glass. Knocked away in a steal, Ethan Thompson. Off balance. And the rebound, Taj Edi for SC. Could have been a huge opportunity there for Oregon State to get even closer. And SC counters as Isaiah White lays it in. That's a good job of finishing that off because, like you said, you can't turn the ball over. Now you've got to guard if you're USC. Guard without fouling. You don't want to stop the clock. Drew Peterson off the ball, whistled for his third. And that will put Oregon State at the line for a one and one with a minute nine to go. This is not going to be strong this game. He hasn't been able to get out of his own way, but you've got to be able to execute. We just saw Roxy, remember coming out of timeout, we just saw two games come down to the last possession. So it's still a minute nine that you have to play out for both teams. One more for Ethan Thompson. 69-62 USC. As Andy Enfield will use his final timeout here with 69 seconds remaining. Good one coming up next as we head to the Big South here on ESPNU as one of the remaining unbeaten Winthrop will host UNC Asheville. Matt Schick and Chris Patola standing by with that one. And a foul will put USC at the line. And Pat Kelsey at, at Winthrop has one of the best guards that nobody talks about in college basketball. Chandler Vaudrin, check him out. He's a triple-double machine. Uh, Pat's been doing it for a long time down there in Winthrop. I, I enjoyed it. It was close to my home when I lived in Charlotte. And anyone being coached by that man gets coached as a student athlete a holistic person i, I love their program rock let me ask you a question with yeah. the trojans if they're able to make it to the tournament how far do you think they can go with all things clicking their free throw shooting needs to get better as you saw just 65 percent as a team they got to hit shots they're hitting shots and ethan anderson could be a key factor adrian if usc is going to make a run ethan anderson to me has to be involved because he's again he's got the ability to do things that i don't think anybody else on this usc team can do and getting him healthy was a big key for this team he missed eight games with the back issue but he has the ability to help usc go a long way there's evan mobley on the glass and it, it, it certainly helps off. having evan mobley sure 
But I, I think everything you said is a slam dunk. I think he is an X factor because he can defend bigger guys than he is. Uh, I think if he can hit that outside shot consistently and continue to improve his conditioning and feel for the game, I say he's an NBA talent. I love this young man's game. So uh, defensively, they can defend anything in the nation. It's the other intangibles, the shooting, the uh, free throws, the decision making. They can be as good as they want to be. I agree with you, Roxy. Max Agbonkolo at the line for Andy Enfield. When you, when you look at this conference as a whole, do you see USC as a real threat to win the league? Oh, absolutely. Uh, USC, if the road runs through USC, it runs through UCLA, Colorado, and keep your eye on Stanford. Stanford has not been healthy all season long and hadn't played at home. So you've got, like Mike Gray from Notre Dame said, you got to get old and stay old. So that's just how good the Pac-12 is. Absolutely, the road runs through Colorado and it runs through California. And the other team to keep an eye on is they're on pause again. Oregon's got a lot of games to make up. And they lost to Oregon State last Saturday night at home, but they didn't have Chris Duarte or yes. LJ Figueroa in that game. Uh -huh, so they need about to them. get That's right. How good the league is. And they haven't had Will Richardson yet this season. Out of bounds. Yeah. And it belongs to Oregon State with 14.3 remaining. Yeah, and they're we going to get Will Richardson teams. back at some point. He's a big key for them. Yeah, that, that's how good. And then Dana Altman, who I think is working on a Hall of Fame career. He's got over 600 wins already. I think uh, as well, Oregon is going to be in the mix big time. Evan Mobley missing a three. Offensive glass put back for Isaiah White. 11 points for White. Final few seconds, Zach Reichel missing a three. And that'll do it. Final score, USC 75, Oregon State 62. Andy Enfield's team, Adrian, they've won eight of their last nine.